anyone got the tune i'll be impressed it's from winehouse's album back in black and i thought since we're talking about tudor black bays black bay 58 returning it would be something quite fitting with prediction season upon us i've left this one for quite a few months without addressing it but i've got some cool stuff to share with you the first part of the video i'll expand on the supposed leaked black bay 58 looking at it after spending a lot of time with a painstaking render replicating what we have seen, comparing it to other models, and questioning whether or not it's true. And of course, part two, using what we've been given, using what we know, expand on this guilt dial Black Bay 58, question what the next generation's going to be like, because we all know it's on its way. Tudor's most popular watch, most anticipated watch, definitely deserves a few upgrades, wouldn't you say? So about five months or so ago, an image or a render, whatever you want to call it, appeared in Esquire UK's magazine underneath the Tudor section. And first glance, nothing looks too out of the ordinary. Ranger, Pelagos, Black Bays, and then in the bottom right corner, a weird looking thing. Something that looks like a Black Bay 54, but then it's listed as a Black Bay 58. Now we could all think that this was an error. Maybe someone in the department put a Black Bay 54 render on the page, listed it as something else in the catalog by accident, mislabeled it. Honest mistake. But believe it or not, there are quite a few differences, more than just one. First question, is this the next generation Black Bay 58? And this is when it gets interesting. We can sort of see if it's true that it's following in the vein of the Black Bay 54, but with a couple of modular improvements. And that doesn't go against what Tudor is all about, and especially when we see it compared side by side. The dial of the strange watch appears enlarged, pushed to the fringes of the rehort. You can barely see the chapter ring. But that could just be proportions and a distortion of the image. The bezel is where things change, because it looks thinner. The insert is using silver markers instead of gold. The insert doesn't have a red triangle. The numerals on the insert are the modern Black Bay numbers instead of the classic 54 numbers. And it also has 15 minute hash marks. So a completely different bezel, more in line with the Black Bay 54, but more modern like the Black Bay 58. Other things to add is that the crown appears slightly larger and the hour hand also looks bigger. So the point to be made, there have been multiple changes to this watch. And for that reason, we can take it a lot more seriously as something a little bit less imaginary. In a way, seen as a spiritual successor to the Black Bay 54 that's slightly bigger, but more a part of this collection. You know, they want to try and make a range of watches that all look pretty recognizable from across the room. And I think there is some merit to this, the brand trying to rein in these specific watches into certain categories. But is this example what the Black Bay 58 wearer wants for the next generation of this legendary piece? I don't think so. <laughs> On one side, it is believable. It's also likely. It's the sort of thing that we will see, right? But it's also not exactly mind-blowing, and it'd be so easy to get it muddled up with the 54 unless you look at them closely. And the 58 being what a lot of people would consider the cornerstone watch of the collection, this particular model deserves many more nuances. From the new Meta certification to gilt bezel accents, there is so much amazing work to be done to make this watch 10 times more exciting. Because four digit submariners are a gold mine and Tudor has the opportunity of using so much of Rolex's vintage catalog to their advantage. 
question is why don't they do it? And we will get to that later in the video. The real irony is that Tudor has given us such great interpretations in the past, like the 7923 for only watch in 2015. It's crazy to think that the answer is right there in front of us, in front of them. The Tudor only needs to look at this particular watch, expand on it, and we would all be happy. Give us those pencil hands, those red accents on the dial, a red triangle. Funny enough that we can actually see this inspiration trickling into the Meta certified Black Bay. So where the Black Bay 54 pulled its inspiration from a Rolex like the 6205, the Black Bay 58 could pull from the 6536, the 6538, with even more character injected into the mix. Arguably some of the coolest Submariners ever built, especially considering that they were some of the last of the Big Crown, of the No Crown Guard variants. But they also included all the quirks like coin edging on the bezel, gilt dials, red triangles at the 12, red text accents on the dial, and if you were very lucky, a white running seconds hand. Both Rolex and Tudor are guilty of not using these elements in their watches, and it's so frustrating because the possibilities here are endless. Now naturally we would like to see the Black Bay 58 with the new Meta certified caliber. So gone would be the three lines of text on the dial, welcoming the two line instead. Outside aesthetics, big crown, 39mm diameter, slimmer case profile, and an included T-fit clasp. This is all to be expected at this point, nothing else will suffice. And considering that this will follow suit with what we've been seeing with the next generation Black Bay collection. It would be great to see them get rid of the rivets on the bracelets finally, but that also does go against the Black Bay range, and since it's been around for a decade, I don't think that's going to change. But of course we know the beauty of these classic designs is in the nuance, and this is where we can have fun. So here are some of my ideas. Taking the gilt bezel insert, but replacing the late 60s, 70s font with a more period correct, rounded font that we saw debuted on the Black Bay 54. Keeping the red triangle at the top of the bezel is one option that I'm sure the enthusiast would like, but another option would be to remove it. Hash marks, optional. I kind of enjoy not having hash marks on the bezel purely for that level of symmetry. The dial could be more of a gloss black instead of the earlier generation in matte. Maybe having a brown sunbrush finish that we've seen debuted on the 54, but we've also seen other colors arriving like that sunbrushed black gray on the Pelagos 39. And really throwing it out there into the realm of impossibility, they could include a brownish tropical dial on this watch instead. And for the details to really stand out, slightly larger plots, red depth rating, and a white running seconds hand. The way I see it, because the Black Bay 58 has been such an important watch for modern Tudor, you know, being so influential in the areas of the bronze variants, in 925, in gold, being the sole piece that has catapulted the Black Bay range into the popularity that it's now experiencing, the next generation Black Bay 58 should be a watch that's put on a pedestal. And in doing so, it can be a watch that will not only stand out from the group, but also debut new aspects in a 39mm case. And that's why I particularly like the white running seconds hand, calling back to the 6538, but is also characterful and symbolizes a key point in the Submariner's history. I've said this so many times before, but the thing about being the designer is seeing these creative opportunities that brands aren't taking. In this sort of situation, you see the potential there. But the reason why we don't see these fun creative additions is that Tudor follows what I would call the 80% the or the 90% rule, where they get virtually everything right but they leave something out, something to keep us wanting. As sad as it is to admit, Tudor is not Rolex. Tudor is not authorized to create a one watch for everybody. And for that reason, they are obliged to leave the door open constantly for further changes, further updates, or in other cases, to push people to look at Rolex instead of their brand. It's a very smart decision for these brands to creatively bounce off one another. But in the long run, Tudor doesn't get the appreciation they deserve because they're also not authorized to use certain elements in their pieces. And for that reason, we miss out on elements that we truly want to see. And at this point of the video, I'll also include renders that I did about six months ago, looking at color variations, how green and blue and other elements could be implemented with a gilt bezel. So as much as I love the idea of going creatively mad with these pieces, and there's so much potential here to create such exciting designs under the Black Bay 58 line, I can also understand how the 54 could influence the 58, and how this leaked watch could make a lot of sense as a procedural update instead of anything groundbreaking. But I think all said, the 58 deserves exclusivity to its name, because it has been so instrumental in the development of this brand over the last five or six years, especially when we're dealing with the gilt dial, the gilt bezel variant. There is too much opportunity here to not miss for the next generation. 
So what do you think about this leaked variant? Is it something we should take seriously or not? And on the other hand, do we think we will be seeing the Black Bay 58 anytime soon? Or is Tudor deliberately holding it back, giving us time to stew as they create the next generation GMT? All valid questions. And stay tuned because I have a handful of prediction videos around Rolex and Tudor over the coming weeks, months. And thank you as always for taking the time to watch this video. See you in the next one.